The evidence is overwhelming that what we were taught in school about ancient human civilization, particularly about the ancient Egyptians, is far from accurate. Specifically that our true history was once far older and advanced than we ever thought possible. And the most recent scientific evidence further demonstrates that the Great Pyramid of Giza, Egypt was not a tomb built for the pharaohs, but is literally a massive technological structure that is beyond our current understanding. You may have seen the news articles that reported on a recent study published in the Journal of Applied Physics, which was conducted by researchers and physicists from Germany and Russia, which provided scientific data based on calculations which showed that the Great Pyramid can concentrate electromagnetic energy inside of its internal chambers as well as under its base and inside the subterranean chamber. Now the significance of this discovery cannot be overstated because we now have scientific data which supports the theory that the Great Pyramid of Giza was in fact a technological structure of some kind. And I discussed this in detail last year in a video I made where I combined Nikola Tesla's concept for harnessing wireless energy out of the earth. And I make the case that the Great Pyramid may have been a structure for generating power, a theory that has been proposed for decades by researchers such as Christopher Dunn and others. But with the recent discovery involving the Great Pyramid of Giza's ability to concentrate and focus energy, we have to start asking serious questions as to what this massive and mysterious structure's purpose actually was. Because listen to this. Included in the study, the physicists stated that due to the data they obtained, they want to replicate the results on a nanoscale and design pyramidal nanoparticles that could be employed in futuristic nanosensors and improved solar cells. In other words, because of this discovery, which was based off calculations of the pyramid, which included the size and dimensions of the overall structure, and the shape and dimensions of the internal chambers, we are able to advance nanosensor technology, which, wow, if you think about it, we use sensors in so many things now. Our cell phones, automatic doors, automatic lights, anti-collision sensors on car bumpers, and the examples really are endless. I mean, they are used for measuring light, pressure, sound, temperature, humidity. It's crazy at how many different things we use sensors for and never really think about it. But not just developing better nanosensors, we're now also able to develop more efficient solar panels because of this discovery. Stop and think about how big of a deal this discovery really is. And to clarify, the data obtained that we can use to develop the solar cells and sensors is not suggesting that the pyramid chambers were some type of sensor or solar cell of any kind. What the Great Pyramid actually is or was, we still do not know. But with all of this said, we do know that the Great Pyramid of Giza is somehow able to focus and harness energy. And according to the so-called experts, this must all be just a coincidence, because how could the ancients have had this type of knowledge, which somehow exceeds our own, at least in some ways? But wait a second, just a coincidence, really? So it just so happens that the largest and most mysterious structure ever built, done with extreme precision, which mimics modern day laser cut technology. You can't even fit a razor blade between the stone blocks that make up the pyramid. Look at this photo as an example of a shaft within the so-called King's Chamber, and this is of granite. These stones were cut so precisely that they fit together with watertight accuracy, and it extends for hundreds of feet and an unknown amount of stone blocks. And they say that they did this with chisels and bronze saws. Like, <laughs> no, those proposed methods have long been since debunked, and I've shared this in detail in other videos. But Furthermore, the size and shape of the tunnels and chambers inside of the pyramid, which, by the way, bear zero resemblance to an Egyptian tomb, as I'll be discussing later in this video, but it just so happens that they are able to focus and concentrate in electromagnetic energy, which they are saying is going to help us advance our modern technology. And it's all just a coincidence. The ancients must have randomly chosen the specific design and size of the pyramid and its chambers. Uh, yeah, I really don't think that this is a coincidence whatsoever, especially when you combine other fascinating details about the Great Pyramid, a few of which I've shared in other videos, which I have to share again because these details cannot be left out of this video. For example, did you know that the location of the Great Pyramid of Giza, Egypt, just so happens to be the location that they were going to choose to be the prime meridian? 
This is because of its proximity to the geographical center of Earth's landmass. It's the one spot on land where you pass over more land than any other. And they ended up choosing Greenwich, England to be the prime meridian because of the fact that London's busy shipping lanes in the English Channel are actually the busiest on Earth. And to reduce time zone confusion, they chose not to go with Giza. Think about this for a moment. The most mysterious structure in the history of mankind just so happens to be located on this one unique spot. And here's another fact to add on top of that. The Great Pyramid faces true north almost perfectly. In fact, down to a fraction of one degree of accuracy. What makes this particularly incredible is that there was no north star in the sky to use as orientation in the third millennium BC when the pyramids of Giza are said to have been built. And this, of course, is due to the Earth's tilt and precession of the equinox. So the question becomes, how were they able to identify true north so precisely, and not only that, create a structure so large that aligns so accurately to it? And let's not forget that it is made up of approximately 2.5 million multi-ton stone blocks, some of which exceed 70 tons. And it is nearly 500 feet tall and over 750 feet wide at its base. And you can see the metric conversion here in this image. Whoever designed this did not just randomly choose these insanely large measurements, and they didn't just do it because they could do it. They chose the specifics during the planning and did so for a reason. And the size is not the only amazing thing about it. The mathematical formulas and equations necessary to accurately piece together millions of stone blocks is astonishing, especially when you consider its complicated internal layout. And this brings us back to the incredible discovery that this study revealed. The coincidental or accidental fact that the pyramid concentrate electromagnetic energy inside of its chambers and at its base. So pair the various details I just shared about it, including its coincidental proximity to the Earth's center of landmass. Consider for a moment Nikola Tesla's concept for utilizing the world as a dynamo and harnessing wireless energy out of it. Is it possible that the Great Pyramid of Giza was a power plant that somehow operated on the same premise that Nikola Tesla had theorized? And I think that the recent discovery regarding the pyramid's ability to concentrate energy further supports this prospect. And of course, you know, that may not be the case at all, but it's worth mentioning that Nikola Tesla chose to build the Tesla Tower above an underground aquifer. And most people do not know that there is an ancient aquifer actually underneath the Giza pyramids, a massive network of caves, tunnels, and chambers. And this was reported by NBC News back in 2009, and the article discussed the existence of these caves, even pointing out how British Consul General Henry Salt investigated these caves with Italian explorer Giovanni Caviglia all the way back in 1817. All the evidence shows that this cave system exists, and it's even corroborated by ancient funerary texts which clearly allude to the existence of a subterranean world in the vicinity of the Giza pyramids. And you can take the ancient Egyptian book of the dead as an example. So the article goes on to discuss how Zahi Hawass, the former minister of antiquities of Egypt, which have of course discussed in several other videos, but he completely dismissed that discovery stating, and I quote, there are no new discoveries to be made at Giza. We know everything about the plateau. <laughs> um, what? And believe it or not, that is the last time the public ever heard about this network of caves and tunnels and chambers underneath the Giza Plateau. For some reason, there is not one single record of these caves documented within Egyptian antiquities, at least that's available to the public. Also keep in mind that this is the same guy who slammed the 2017 discovery of a massive chamber or void within the Great Pyramid and is literally attempting to delay excavation of it for years. No joke. Now, combine that with the fact that about 20 years ago, ground-penetrating radar confirmed that a chamber exists underneath the Sphinx, approximately 30 feet down and is estimated to be 26 feet wide and 40 feet in length. This is documented, yet most people are not aware of this, and the Egyptian authorities will not permit any type of excavation, they will not allow researchers to do anything or see anything. They're not even permitted to drill a small hole to lower a camera. These are just a few examples. There are others worthy of mention, but I'm pointing all of this out to show you guys that there is other information that exists related to our ancient history 
that is not available to the general public. And one of the big problems is that the general public is, well, completely oblivious to this fact. Because they wouldn't know these things unless they researched it on their own, because after all, they don't teach this stuff in school, and the largest media outlets on planet Earth seem to dismiss or omit this information altogether. And the recent discovery of the electromagnetic energy within the Great Pyramid is an outstanding example of this point. Wait till you see this. So, while I was researching this topic, I saw several dozen media outlets from around the world that covered this story. Yet you may be curious to know which news outlets did not cover this story, despite the fact that they report on stories related to the ancient Egyptians on a regular basis. Even look at the most recent example involving the discovered black granite sarcophagus found in Alexandria, Egypt. So now I'm going to show you all the media outlets that covered on the black granite sarcophagus, but did not cover on the recent discovery involving the electromagnetic properties inside the Great Pyramid. CNN, Fox News, CBS, ABC, BBC, Time Magazine, Business Insider, The New York Times, The Washington Post, The Washington Times, NPR, Reuters, National Geographic, Scientific American, and The Smithsonian. So these outlets frequently cover news related to ancient Egypt, yet they chose to skip this recent discovery completely. Am I the only one that finds that odd? Evidence that shows that maybe the ancient Egyptians were more advanced than we ever thought possible and they just ignore the story altogether? I mean, we're now able to develop better nano sensors and solar panels because of this discovery and they don't even share it. And by the way, the articles that did cover it throw in outdated information such as suggesting that it was built by slaves, which it's embarrassing that the New York Post printed that. The slave theory has long been since debunked and even Zahi Hawass denies it. And of course, the articles also state that the pyramids were built to be tombs for the pharaohs, but it's funny how they never mention that not one single mummy was ever found in any of these pyramids, ever. That's right, and a true story. They don't even mention that in school for some reason. But research it for yourself. No mummy was ever found in the pyramids. So when they call it the king's chamber, no. No king mummy was ever found. When they call it the queen's chamber, nope, no queen mummy was ever found there either. You should also know that there are zero hieroglyphs or petroglyphs of any kind in any of the pyramids, which is odd because confirmed Egyptian tombs, such as at the Valley of the Kings, well, just look for yourself. Look at the amazing artwork. This is what confirmed Egyptian tombs actually look like, and it makes sense. So compare that, again, to the bare walls within the pyramids. And it's also worth mentioning that despite the tens of thousands of hieroglyphs and petroglyphs found throughout Egypt, not one single one of them depicts anything about the pyramids or the Sphinx. Literally nothing. Which is of course why we have no idea how they constructed the pyramids. But you may remember the clickbait articles from over a year ago which stated that newly discovered ancient papyrus scrolls revealed how the pyramid was built. But if you read the actual details of this discovery, all the scrolls state is that some limestone blocks were moved from across the Nile River and brought to Giza. Like, so what? I mean, this was already known. The only thing that this discovery suggests is that they repaired the casing stones following an earthquake, which has long been suggested. And just like we know that the Egyptians changed the face of the Sphinx, well, many are not aware that there is definitive evidence that the Egyptians also repaired parts of the body of the Sphinx as well, with limestone blocks. And keep in mind that the original Sphinx was carved entirely out of limestone bedrock, so all these tiles and blocks that you see are restorations that happened later, in both ancient and modern times. The discovered papyrus scrolls mention absolutely nothing about how the pyramid was constructed, and it only states what we already knew, which was that stone blocks were taken from quarries and brought to Giza. Yet Zahi Hawass referred to this as the greatest discovery in Egypt in the 21st century. But here's the reason why the story fell flat and gained little attention. And I encourage others to read what the discovery actually found because even the guy who made the discovery downplayed the significance and countered what Zahi had actually said about it. I point this out because every time I make a video on the topic of the pyramids and how mysterious they are, I get comments from people that apparently only read the clickbait headlines on this story and did not actually read the story because 
Many stated in their comments that, well, we've discovered how the pyramids were built. It's no longer a mystery. The papyrus scrolls revealed it, which again is literally not true. We do not know what methods were used to cut, carve, or move these stones into place inside the pyramid. Now, with all of this said, I should point out that I am not 100% convinced that the pyramids were power plants. To me, it just seems like the most likely possibility for a variety of reasons. Let's not forget that the largest structures that we make today are for producing power, such as with hydroelectric dams. Well, it also just so happens that the Nile River used to be eight miles closer to the pyramids, going right up to the Pyramid of Giza steps, and here you can see the existing evidence in the terrain. This is an important factor when you consider that there are underground caves below the pyramids, and especially when you connect the dots on Nikola Tesla and how he chose to put the Tesla Tower above an aquifer, like I mentioned earlier all in an attempt to use the earth to generate electricity. But of course, many people will find the prospect of an ancient civilization before ours being able to harness electricity as, well, a ridiculous theory backed by no evidence. And it's actually been referred to as pseudoscience as well. But take a look at this, and this is in Dendera, Egypt, which is referred to as the Dendera light bulb. What exactly is this depicting? It looks like a light bulb with the snake depicting an electrical current, and if you look at the lotus flower on the right, it's almost as if it's depicting a wire that goes to some type of box. And when you look at the ball on top of, say, this person's head, could this be symbolic of using the power of the earth and the mind to create something? It almost seems like they were depicting that they were combining their mind and abilities and the earth to create electricity. Now, of course, this may not be true at all and could be a total stretch, and obviously many people would doubt it, but I would be curious to hear what their explanation for it would be. Either way, it's a thought-provoking discussion. But pyramid power plant or not, <laughs> mark my words, the discovery of the electromagnetic properties inside the pyramid is going to, well, eventually, pave the way for some of the most incredible discoveries in modern times about our ancient ancestors, and that somehow we were once far more advanced than we ever thought possible. So the question becomes just how advanced were they and what happened to them? In other videos, I've discussed the Younger Dryas climate catastrophe of 13,000 years ago that essentially it was a total reset here on Earth for whatever civilization was around at that time. And this actually reminds me of an outstanding quote by Graham Hancock, which has stated that we are a species with amnesia. He says that my sense is that we are missing a huge part of the human story. I think that it's possible, indeed probable, that we are a species with amnesia, that we've lost the record of our story going back thousands of years before so-called history began. And I think if we could go back to that dark epoch, we would discover many astounding things about ourselves. Anyways, guys, I'm going to leave it at that, but leave a comment and share what your thoughts are. I look forward to seeing what other people think about this recent discovery. But I'm Jimmy, this is Bright Insight. Hit the like button and subscribe, and I have many more videos to come and a whole wide variety of topics. Take care, everybody.